let x be the amount of uranium that is present at any time t. Now we are given that the rate of disintegration which is dx upon dt is proportional to the amount of uranium present which is x. Therefore we can write dx upon dt is equal to minus kx where k is the constant of proportionality and the minus sign indicates that as t increases x decreases. Separating the variables we can write dx upon x is equal to minus k dt integrate both sides and introduce a constant of integration say ln c on the right hand side the given equation becomes ln x is equal to minus kt plus ln c which can also be written as ln of x upon c is equal to minus kt and therefore x is equal to c times e raised to the power minus kt. Let's call this equation result 1. Now we are given that at t is equal to t1 the amount of uranium present is equal to m1. Putting this in equation 1 we get m1 is equal to c times e raised to the power minus k t1. Similarly at t is equal to t2 x is equal to m2 and again putting in equation 1 we get m2 is equal to c times e raised to the power minus k t2. Dividing the two results above we get m1 upon m2 is equal to e raised to the power k times in brackets t2 minus t1. Taking the log of both sides we get ln of m1 upon m2 is equal to k times t2 minus t1 and therefore the value of k is equal to 1 upon t2 minus t1 times ln of m1 upon m2. Let's call this result 2. Now let's assume that the amount of uranium that is originally present is equal to a0. So x is equal to a0 at t is equal to 0. Putting this result in equation 1 we get a0 is equal to c times e raised to the power 0 which implies that c is equal to a0. Therefore equation 1 becomes x is equal to a0 times e raised to the power minus kt. Now let the half-life of uranium be capital T. This means that after time capital T, the amount of uranium left is A0 upon 2. Therefore, x is equal to A0 upon 2 after time capital T. Using this in equation 1, we get A0 upon 2 is equal to A0 times e raised to the power minus kt. A0 cancels, therefore 2 is equal to e raised to the power k times capital T. Therefore ln2 is equal to k times capital T and therefore the half-life capital T is equal to 1 upon k times ln2. Substituting the value of k obtained in result 2 above, we get capital T is equal to T2 minus T1 times ln2 divided by ln of m1 upon m2 which is the required answer.